Okay, welcome to the Cymax channel. Uh, today I want to talk about this uh, exciting new direction in writing code, sometimes called vibe coding uh, by Andrew Carpathy, where you basically are writing code by prompt to an LLM. So uh, this is common feature of things like Cursor, GitHub Copilot, um, it's integrated into Colab, you can get it into JupyterLab, you can pay for cursor and have uh, an editor that knows how to do this. And today I wanna to talk about doing this in Emacs and especially doing it in org mode. Okay, so uh, I'm just gonna work with this polynomials um, idea. This is from some notes. Let's say we have a specific polynomial here and I want to do some things with it. Um, let's, let's say we make a plot and then let's say we also make a uh, find the roots of this polynomial. So one thing I could do is, is just start here and say represent this equation uh, as a list of coefficients that NumPy can use to get the roots. So that's going to be my prompt. Uh, I have written a function that will take this current line and do that. Um, and so I call that function copilot. So I'll press C here. And that will extract those coefficients and tell us what we have. And now let's say I want to uh, use NumPy to get the roots. And so we'll get this and do this again. And now let's say print the roots. All right, and now I can run this. And let's see, it says we got an error. I can tell now the error is it doesn't have NumPy. Um, so it's uh, clearly not perfect, but I'll go ahead and fix that. Import NumPy as NP. And now we get two roots, minus four and minus four. Uh, that basically makes sense. You could factor this into x plus four squared. And so we get two roots at uh, plus or minus this. Um, these are not exactly minus four like you would expect because of uh, issues with floats but that is uh, the nature of, of using NumPy. Okay, let's, um, let's see if we can get it to make a plot. I'm going to try using audio for this. So I'm gonna just say out loud what I want after I run a command and then have it uh, try that. So from my um, Hydra here, I have run copilot from audio. So when I type AC, I'll say um, let's plot this from minus 10 to plus 10 and use polyval. Uh, maybe I won't do that. Maybe let's just see what happens if I ask it to plot that polynomial from minus 10 to 10. Plot that polynomial from minus 10 to 10. All right, didn't do a super great job of getting plot out of note, but that's okay. Uh, it uses an A range. Probably I would have used a lin space, um, but it is kind of doing the right thing, maybe. Let's see, did it use, it did call that coefficients before, so it's reusing that and it's just evaluating the polynomial. Uh, I see, and it's not actually plotting it because it is, it is said to note. Uh, so let's try it again and see if I can get it to do the right thing. Make a plot with matplotlib of the polynomial from x equals minus 10 to 10. Okay. Um, does something that I also wouldn't do, uh, which is it wraps all of that in a function so that it can do that. Um, but let's go ahead and plot it. And we get the values. What are we printing up here? Polynomial values. These are all the integers. And then down here we have a plot. It's a little bit hard to see that there are two 
roots down here because the scale is so so large um, uh, yeah and you can see actually over here uh, it's not even obvious this is right I guess the problem here uh, what's not obvious is that this parabola is yeah it is obvious it's right now uh, this parabola comes down to zero at exactly one place uh, at minus four and it just touches zero so it doesn't actually intersect the x-axis uh, and so that's why we have two roots that are at minus four um, let's see what else um, what else is worthwhile showing in here um, maybe nothing um, Maybe I'll switch over and just show you a little bit of what's in how this magic works. So there is a Whisper library. It's a little tricky to install, um, but it's it lives here, and then we just require it. This is just my uh, Hydra for, for GPT that is bound to Hyper-G. And I use GPTEL with GPT-40, and so that's the setup there. I made this GPTEL copilot function. It's I'm not sure it's in its final form. Uh, it doesn't do exactly what I wanted. It's close to what I got in Jupyter Lab, uh, but the gist of it is that we have a buffer local history so that it keeps track of your conversation or your chat. Um, that gets put into a function that can retrieve the history. So this just retrieves a string of all of your, your chats, the user chats and system replies. The GPTEL copilot function here, it just takes the current line or the region you selected as your prompt and we get the language of a source block. Um, the system prompt here just says, you're a professional programmer, reply with concise code. Uh, don't do any explanation or code fences because all we want is the code. You don't want the narrative that goes with it. This most of the time works. Sometimes it, it doesn't always. And this is where I include the history. I include the history in the system prompt. That's not what I would do if I was writing this with light LLM and Python. Um, but this isn't light LLM or Python. And this seems to be okay. Um, this function actually was generated using a variation of it, so this is a weird way of defining the response callback uh, using the labels function, and uh, and then I push the user prompt into the history, and this is where uh, all the LLM magic happens. So it takes the prompt, prompt um, provides context for where to um, the bounds of the region, so we can put our response afterwards. And then when it succeeds, it calls this response callback function that up here gets the bounds from the callback, um, sets the insert position to be at the end of, of your region, pushes the response onto your history, and then inserts the response uh, in the buffer. Nothing fancy there. Um, that's how I go from prompt to code using that function. And then the Whisper Copilot is uh, not very tricky either. Um, here I just call the whisper function. This is what records some audio, transcribes it to text, and then it inserts the text. Uh, here I comment that, that region and then uh, use the Cymax GPTEL copilot on that region. Uh, and that's just the like minor illusion of how I go from audio to text to code uh, for that. Um, this is all kind of in my, my private files. I haven't figured out if it's going to be uh, useful enough to make it into Cymax, but I thought it was interesting enough to um, make a video that shows kind of what's possible and what, um, what you might do afterwards. This is not quite as fancy as what GPTEL has. Uh, GPTEL or GPTL, um, would allow you to modify this prompt and rerun it. Uh, it's not quite that fancy. So like here, for example, I might say um, only write a script 
do not use functions. And then I need to delete the, this code. Um, and, and then I can call copilot on it. And so now we just have that. And maybe I could just do undo there. Use np.linspace for the x values. Um, there we have a lin space. And now we get uh, some, some answers. X values. Let's delete this. What is printing here? Oh, there's a bunch of stuff up here. We can get rid of these, I think. All right, so it's kind of hard to see everything on when this is blown up so, so much. Um, but that gives you an idea of like what this uh, vibe programming might look like. You are just going to be modifying these prompts and uh, reevaluating the code generation. There's a little bit of a, I don't know, interesting dilemma of what happens when, uh, say, I don't want to use 400 points or I want to modify this code. The code then is not like 100% consistent with the prompt. And you might decide. Um, whether you want to keep the prompt in there for remembering how you got there. Uh, but if you re, if you, even if I was to rerun this, it would generate new code that might not be the same. So I don't know what the right answer there is. This is not a hundred percent reproducible um, effort. Like if I delete this and run it again, we might get different results because these things are not fully. Uh, deterministic. And in this case, it looks pretty similar, but it isn't always going to be the same depending on what you've asked for. Uh, that's the nature of this. And I don't know what the answer is today. Um, you have to live with your, your decisions in the future and figure out uh, what the right thing to do is. And that's that. All right, so that's sort of it, uh, just to get an impression of what what might be possible in another editor that isn't cursor. Uh, you do need access to the API key for GPT, um, but you could make this work for Gemini. You can get you can probably get free API keys from Google for using Gemini, and of course you could use Olave.